We're going to head over to Indianapolis just a few hours away. And looks like Anthony Richardson is back in the driver's seat, being named the starting quarterback today for the rest of the season. In the just a couple of days after being told it was Joe Flacco, we kind of talked about this in depth when, it, when he first got sent to the bench that this is not the worst thing in the world. We can all relax. It's not a quote unquote benching as much as it is a you're a 22 year old kid, but we this is a lot. We got some stuff to work on. And we heard that in the press conference today from the head coach, Shane Spiken, basically implying he just needed some time to go through a process to work on the attention, the details, some of those things, the between Sundays being a pro. Obviously, he didn't learn a lot from Joe Flacco during those two games while he was playing because those were pretty awful. But you learn a lot in between Sundays when you don't have the entire workload on your shoulders about getting in early, staying in late. When you do that three-step drop, when you hit that, your receiver's going to be at this landmark. The ball's supposed to go there. You read where the safeties go, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's kind of – I'm surprised it took two weeks. I almost wonder if either, A, the owner asked for the benching in the first place, or, B, this was a situation of, all right, we're probably not going to the Super Bowl. We're not going to do much right now anyway. We're all but out of it. At least get him out there. And then there's the conspiracy theory of season ticket renewals are coming up on Friday, November 15th. So you need to give some people a chance to renew their tickets. But I think it's a good move. Get him back out there. you got the Jets this weekend, a good defense that has been leaky. Just he needs to play at this point, figure out what you got. I think the benching will be beneficial, as we've seen with Bryce Young. Since he's come back, he looked a lot more comfortable and a lot better. If Anthony stays healthy the rest of the year, gets this time in, I think this will be beneficial for him as well. So I'm excited to see him back in. We'll have the oldest starting quarterback in the league taking on the youngest starting quarterback in the league. So the fun storylines are back on the menu this Sunday. Yeah, the Colts continue to speckle the record books with a bunch of random firsts, it seems mm-hmm. like, or oldest versus youngest throughout the lifetime of the Colts. Um, and this goes back to, you know, early Colts, Baltimore Colts, Colts era. Uh, I always find this funny whenever I see the Colts, like a Colts uh, stat, when it's like something like, oh, the oldest quarterback once faced the youngest quarterback who was an Indianapolis Colt. It's like, uh, what, what does that matter for anything? But it's like they're all over the record books. I, I think Jim Irsay gets off on this at this point in time. Um, but no, I, it, you know, for AR, I don't, I don't hate the idea that he's sat for two weeks. I think if anybody's worked a job long enough, there becomes moments where you're maybe not complacent, but you get comfortable. You start stop doing the things that made you succeed and get to this point because you're there, you're comfortable. And and we talked about this last time we talked to AR uh, when he tapped out and well, you know, say whatever you will about that. It's sometimes you just feel like you're untouchable and it takes a little bit of a sitting down. And in this case, literal sitting down of AR to, to kind of refocus him. And I think he, you're starting to see the things that were, they were touting when he was a rookie coming into the league and here he is in, you know, studying film he's studying defense he's going to be facing he's studying and taking lessons from from his older player from the old players around him he's learning how to be a pro and he's succeeding at it he's excelling in practice he's lighting it up these are the same type of comments you've heard over kind of the last two weeks where you're starting to hear more about him whereas when he was starting you didn't necessarily hear these things in the off in, in in the weeks leading up to it so i almost we, you know we said it was a good thing it seems to be a good thing and while you mentioned yeah it hasn't been a great look to watch old old school Joe Flacco there play quarterback for the last two weeks. It doesn't mean what Joe Flacco was doing was an educational for AR. And I think that's a part of it. It's like, I think there were pieces and parts of what Flacco was doing to prepare. And even during the game, like, okay, Flacco threw a pick, but maybe it bounced off his receiver's hands. Maybe he missed time the throw by two steps. And, and he's going to come to the sideline, look at the pad and learn of, you know, how that works. And he sat next to Flacco the entire time on the sideline. Whenever Flacco's on the sideline, there was AR right next to him, except for maybe at the very end of the game when it's getting washed. But you learn by kind of osmosis in that situation. It's how Aaron Rodgers learned under Brett Favre. And it's how Jordan Love learned under Aaron Rodgers. And I'm using those two as an example because that might be the best succession we've ever seen as a quarterback to to the next step other than Alex Smith to Patty, the difference being Patty was actively being taught by Alex Smith. And Alex Smith talked about that. Like, I didn't want to teach him, but let's be honest. I knew the kid had a great arm. So why, why not teach him for the betterment of the franchise going forward? Like, it just made sense. And, and whereas we know Brett Favre clearly stated, yeah, I'm not training my backup. And Aaron Rodgers followed suit. So, and not saying Joe Flacco is not going to help teach AR, but I think this is a closer situation to that where Joe Flacco is still trying to fight for an extension of his career. 
and Anthony Richards is for for all for all intents and purposes, Anthony Richardson is a young, up and coming, talented player. He may not be the top tier quarterback in this class, but it's it's not crazy to think that this guy might be a slightly adjacent to Cam Newton type of player, not MVP caliber. Although he has the tools to potentially be that, it would take some work. There's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up, but he has the raw talent to be level be the level of Cam. Not going to be there right now, but it's the small steps along the way that's going to matter. And I think that's all the sitting down was, and I hope we're going to see a re- resurgence of him, a phoenix rising from the ashes, if you will, coming back into this one. And if it happens, please, dear God, Anthony Richard, get a giant phoenix tattoo on your chest because I think it would be hilarious just to, like, mess with everybody about it. Or alternatively get a portion. More tattoos. <laughs> What's up? I don't think he has enough room for a big tattoo right there. He's already got a pretty full <sighs> chest play right now. But you know what? Maybe, maybe a little one. Maybe, maybe a small yeah. one. Maybe a tiny little one. That's cool. Just just something somewhere it'll be perfect. But it, I think the best one it was kind of described was by we'll go with India. We'll go to the state of Indiana basketball legend Bobby Knight. The splinters of the bench are some of the best teachers you could find out there. It's a little easier doing basketball than football, especially the quarterback position because just the nature of it. But in this case, you're talking about a 22 year old kid. It's not the end of his career. It was for 16 days or whatever it was. And even if let's say it was for the for a month, even. I think it was literally just one of those things like this job could disappear from you much quicker than you got it. And I think that was kind of the realization that comes with it. Cause let's be honest as 22 year olds were we locked in at all times, not at God, all. No, <laughs> exactly. And I think, and that's not even really an insult on Anthony. That's just how special it is to be an elite quarterback. At This is more of a praise to those guys that are elite out of the gate. Like that is not, that is just a special tool that they have. So I think this is just going to, if he is going to ever be the guy, this is only going to help. And I think you get the rest of the season now, six weeks, go on a little bit of a run, maybe look good down the stretch. The Lions are really your toughest game left. I mean, otherwise you got you got teams like the Jets this week weekend. You got you got Jacksonville again, Tennessee. Like you got some games where you can you can do there's something some, with that. Yeah, there's winnable games up and coming. And and look, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's you know not necessarily how you look before they forge you. It's how they, how you look after they forge, they forge you. So after you get put through the fires of the forge, like what do you turn into? If anybody's ever seen a still ingot before it gets shaped into a sword, it's ugly. It's gross. It needs work. It just looks disgusting. And then you turn into a beautiful sword that hangs on a wall or, you know, whatever, but it's, I mean, really, man, he's so talented. You just got to hope they're pointing him in the right direction. That's like the end of the day. You just want to put him on the right direction for this. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing how it goes. The biggest.